Welcome to CS320, Chapter 15, where we're going to prove that context-free grammars and push-down automatas are essentially equal. That means all the languages we can define with a context-free grammar can also be defined using a push-down automata. And all languages defined with a push-down automata can be defined with a context-free grammar. Now, this shouldn't seem too foreign to you because it's exactly like Kleene's theorem for regular languages. But now we're doing it for context-free languages. Now, Kleene's theorem, we had three different ways to define languages. We had regular expressions, finite automatas, and transition graphs. In this case, we only have two, a context-free grammar and a push-down automata that we learned about in the last chapter. Now, another thing to know is we prove that every regular language can be defined with a context-free grammar. And we didn't really need to prove it with a pushdown automata because we can convert all finite automatas into a pushdown automata. They're basically the same machine, except for the pushdown automata has a stack that you can use if you want to. But for finite automatas, you just ignore the stack and read the letters just like a finite automata would. So we're going to do this in two steps. Step one, we're going to prove that for every context free grammar, we can generate a pushdown automata. So we're going to present a step-by-step -step algorithm that will take a context-free grammar and convert it into a pushdown automata. Now, the first step in that step-by-step -step algorithm is to convert the context-free grammar into Chomsky's normal form, because that will make it really easy. We only have live productions and dead productions to worry about. Now remember this by converting it to Chomsky's normal form, the only way that we change the original language is that we get rid of the null word. So we'll work that back in uh, to our algorithm so that we can put the null word back in. So let's go ahead and get started improving or uh, demonstrating this algorithm. They'll take a context-free grammar and convert it into a pushdown automata. Now we have a context-free grammar over here, and I've already converted it to Chomsky's normal form. If you uh, want to re remember about Chomsky's normal form, we did that two lectures ago. So here are live productions because we have one uh, non-terminal going to two non-terminals, and then we have the two dad productions right here. Okay, so. Um, to get started, we, we have our start state. And immediately, without looking at the input word, remember the input word or from the input tape, we do a read from our push down automata. There is no read. We just automatically push an S onto the stack. And the next step is we're going to pop the S right off. That does seem a little bit weird. But we'll keep going with this, and you'll you'll figure out how this works after we draw up the rest of this pushdown automata. Okay, so now we're going to pop. Remember, we push an S onto our stack, and then we're going to pop that S immediately off. Now, if you notice, this is a non-deterministic pushdown automata. I didn't cover these in detail in the last lecture, but remember palindrome takes advantage of the non-determinism to know when to switch from reading the first half of the word to start verifying that the second half of the word matches the first half of the word. So we're also going to take advantage of this non-determinism. And we're going to pop, whenever we pop an S off, we're going to push on the two non-terminals that the S gets replaced with. In this case, it's an S and a B. And if you notice, I push it on in backwards order. So SB gets pushed on in backwards order with a BS, and that pushes it on this way. Next, uh, we have this one right here. So we pop the S off, and we replace it with a BA, which is in backwards order. And then it goes back to a pop state. And then the, this other live production that we have, when we pop an A off, we push a CC. Since they're both the same, you can't see that it's in backwards order, but this first C goes here and the second C goes there. So um, now that we've uh, dealt with our 
live productions, let's see what we do with our dead productions. Okay, now with all of our dead productions, we add one of these on. Notice when we, uh, a B, big B turns into a little B, so when we pop a big B off, it will read, and this is the first time that we've actually read from our input word. We could have done we could have done all of this without reading from our input word at all, but we go ahead and we read the B and then uh, or the first letter off of the input word and then go back into the pop state, and then next, if we pop a C off, we read and it better be an A on our input tape. So um, and maybe this A is a little out of place. We probably need to put it right there just to see that that clearly when we read, if we read an A off our input tape, we go this way. And if we read a, if we pop a big B off, then we read a little B and we go this way. Notice if we read anything else besides a B, then we'll crash on that. Uh, and if we, and on this case, if we read anything else besides an A, then we'll crash because there's no path for us to follow. Now, finally, we just need to get our accept state in. So when we pop and there isn't any more uh, letters on our stack, so we pop the blank off of the top of the stack that started. And when we first start our machine, there's an infinite number of blanks on our stack. Then we read and hopefully it, there are no more letters on our input tape and then we'll accept the word. So how does this thing, how does this push down automata accept the same language as this? Well, when we start with the start symbol and then we replace the start symbol with two of these, for instance. So on our stack, our stack starts with the start symbol that gets then replaced with the B, S. And the reason why we're doing it in the opposite order is because now, if you look, the top of the stack is the first element right there. Then when we pop, we'll pop another S off and we can replace it with something else. And as we replace it, we're basically have on our stack a list of all of our non-terminals that need to eventually get replaced with terminals. And we're moving from a left to right order so that the very first thing that we, the very first time we do one of these dead productions, we'll end up reading the first letter of our word. So let's just do a little tiny example to see how this accepts the same words. All right, so let's start with a word generated by this grammar, and that word is A-A-B. And you can see how we generate it. We start with the start symbol. It gets replaced with an A-B, and then the A gets replaced with two Cs, and then the C's get replaced with A's, and the B gets replaced with a B. So let's go ahead and run this machine. And here is the word ABB on our input tape, and we have an empty stack to start. Well, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to push an S onto the stack and immediately pop it back off. So we got the S onto the stack, and we immediately pop that S back off. And now we have a choice. Now, by the magic of uh, non-determinism, I know that I want to use this route right here because that's what we did with our replacement right here. So I'm going to push a B and an A onto the stack. Now you can see that the B ended up down below, so it's in the same order because we pushed the B because we pushed this B first and then we pushed the A on top of it. So that's why we reverse the order here. So next we're going to pop the A off of the stack. And there's only one choice here, so we don't really need any non-determinism, but we're gonna push two Cs back onto the stack. Now you can see that now we have this on our stack. So now when we pop, a, pop the top of our stack, which is this C, we're gonna follow this route and read the A off of our input tape. And we turn back to here. Then we're gonna pop another C off of this stack. And that will lead us to read another A off of the tape. And then we'll be back here. 
And then we'll pop a B off of our stack, which will cause us to follow this route and read a B off of our input tape. Then we'll uh, pop one more time. And what's on the top of the stack? Well, the blank that initially started there. And so then we're gonna follow this route and then we're gonna read the first blank on our input tape. And now the word was in our language. So that's how this kind of works. You can read more about this in our chapter. Now, remember I said that step one was to convert a context-free grammar into a pushdown automata. Step two of this proof is to convert a pushdown automata into a context-free grammar. Now, I'm not going to cover this. You can read it in your book. It's about 30 pages of reading in the book that actually proves that you can convert all pushdown automatas into a context-free grammar. However, it'll take so long to understand that that we'll probably spend the rest of our class this semester just trying to understand this one proof. So I'm just going to ask you to take it by faith that it is proved that we can convert pushdown automatas into context-free grammars, but we're not going to uh, cover that. So now we know that um, if you take that by faith, or if you want to read the 30-page proof, you can, that all the context-free grammars are basically have the same power as pushdown automatas. If we can define a language with a context-free grammar, we can do it with a pushdown automata and a pushdown automata to a context-free grammar which is going to introduce context-free languages. A context-free language is a language that can get defined with a context-free grammar or a push-down automata. So thanks for watching.